And then she looked at me and she's like, no, no, too fat. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vân, I'm Vietnamese and I'm gonna be your Vietnamese buddy who helps you understand more about Vietnamese culture, food and travel. Today, I'm gonna answer your questions about Vietnam that you guys sent me on Instagram, Facebook and YouTube community. So if you haven't followed my social media yet, I'm gonna leave the link below so you can follow me and be a part of the fam. Since there are a lot of questions coming in, which I am very, very thankful thankful and I really appreciate that you guys sent me those questions. I decided to do like a Vietnamese culture series where I put those questions into categories. For example, today I'm gonna talk all about Vietnamese travel, if Vietnam is safe for solo traveler, any destination that you guys should definitely visit in Vietnam. So if you are interested in those topics, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so you'll be the first one to be notified for the next Vietnamese culture video. So I have my computer right here to read your questions So I'm gonna be looking at it and without further ado, let's get right into the first question Cool places recommendations for foreigners to know the real Vietnam. Okay, this is a hard question because You know, there are so many beautiful places in Vietnam and it really depends on like your preference if you love to see the mountains and you love to go hiking you can go to Ha Giang, Sapa, Ninh Bình uh, where is up north of Vietnam if you love beaches like me you can visit Nha Trang, Phu Quoc, Đà Nẵng or Ha Long Bay if you want to learn more about Vietnamese history and you want to see like the RC aspects of Vietnam, you can definitely visit Hue, Hội An, Hanoi or Saigon aka Ho Chi Minh City. Yeah, there are just so many places that you can explore when you're in Vietnam. Is it safe to walk alone in Vietnam? So Vietnam is relatively safe for a solo traveler. You know, like even me, I've been traveling alone to a couple places in Vietnam. However, if you are a female traveler, you should definitely not walk alone at night because you might have to deal with catcalling or scams and thefts. So yeah, just keep that in mind. What's the funniest thing you've ever had while traveling in Vietnam? Do you guys remember the video when I did in Mộc Châu that I collaborated with an NGO to promote the minority groups? Uh, I'm gonna leave it like right here, so if you haven't watched it, um, yeah, check it out, and I'll leave the link like above too. So I had a chance to work with Muong people, and there was a scene that I got to wear their traditional clothes and um, like participate in their traditional dance. So I asked the local person, like I asked this lady who is Muong that uh, could I borrow her pink traditional clothes and then she looked at me and she's like no no too fat this one would be better for you the yellow one and then I'm like shocked because she called me fat but for a second I remember that I am Vietnamese and I almost forgot how real Vietnamese people are. She could be so rude under Western perspectives, but because I'm Vietnamese, I know that she didn't mean to insult me. She's just being helpful and being real. <laughs> in fact, being big or being called fat in minority community where people do a lot of labor work can be a good thing because it indicates that you're big enough to do the heavy work. So next time when you come to Vietnam and you're being called big or fat, just don't take it personally, you know, just consider it as a compliment. So what is the easiest way to travel long distance? Bus, taxi or rental car? I feel like it really depends on where you go. Uh, for me, if I wanted to go from cities to cities and especially bigger cities that they have airports, I would fly. If you want to move from provinces to provinces, uh, the best way is the rental car where they have like a sleeping seat that you can sleep, either sleep or sit, you know, like it's 
fairly cheap too. It's like 10 bucks to move from province to province. In the cities, I see a lot of my friends who rent motorbike because they have the international driver license. They would uh, have like a road trip. They would like ride a motorbike up north. So it really depends if you want to ride a motorbike here. And I think it's a very fun experience if you come here and rent a motorbike, you know, because you can feel the freedom while driving. Um, but in the cities, the most popular transportation, uh, public transportation is Grab and B. So if you come to Vietnam, my suggestion is to download these two apps. It's similar to Uber in the US, uh, but it's like they have the motorbike version of it. So if you want to move around the city, you can use those services. They're fairly cheap too. How many districts does Hanoi have and what is each known for? So Hanoi divided in 12 urban districts, one district level down and 17 suburban districts. But today I'm just gonna talk about the, the five main districts that you might need to know when you come to Vietnam. So the first one is the Hoan Kiem district. Considered as the downtown of Hanoi with many major attractions like Hoan Kiem Lake, Hanoi Old Quarter, the Water Puppet Theater, and there are a lot of French architecture such as St. Joseph's Cathedral, Hanoi Opera House, Hoa La Prison, and Hanoi Metropole. Second district is Hai Ba Chung District. Perfect place for shopping. You can visit the two Hanoi largest malls, the Vincom Center and the Vincom Times City there. The third one is Tây Ho District, is where the majority of expats living and working in Vietnam. Very different from other districts because it's surrounded by the West Lake and is very peaceful and beautiful there. If you prefer Western food options, they have Lakeview cafes, sport clubs, and wine bars there. Perfect spot to watch the sunset and ride your bike there too. Bading District is a political center in Vietnam with the majority of government and embassy offices located there. You can see Ho Chi Minh Mausoleum where Ho Chi Minh's body is kept preserved. The final one is Dong Da District, the most densely populated areas with many universities. You can truly see how the locals people live here. Cheap rent and affordable food caters. You can spot a lot of boba tea shops and movie theaters here and there. Very busy residential neighborhood with a massive student population. Also, you can visit the first Vietnamese National University in Dong Da District as well. Ho Chi Minh City or Saigon. I know Ho Chi Minh City is official, but sometimes I see some foreigners referring it to Saigon. How Vietnamese people prefer? Okay, so a lot of Vietnamese people still call it Saigon because it's shorter, but Ho Chi Minh City is an official name since 1976. You can still call it Saigon, no problems, but if you see in writings, like in mailing and addresses, you're gonna see Ho Chi Minh City. How many provinces have you come to Vietnam? Uh, I've been traveling a lot since I was younger with my family and I think that's the reason why I just love traveling, you know? Uh, because my dad is from the north part of Vietnam, my mom is from the central part, so I've been like traveling um, specifically in the north and the central part of Vietnam. I've been to Saigon and some uh, southern parts of Vietnam, but I would love to explore more. So probably like 20 to 30 provinces, I would say, but exploring 63 provinces from north to south of Vietnam still on my bucket list. So you guys, follow my channel to see my journey. Also, if you want to help me grow this channel, you can support me through Buy Me A Coffee. It's a platform similar to Patreon but allowing you to support me without creating an account. You can find the link in the description box or at the right corner of my YouTube banner. If you have to choose Vũng Tàu or Nha Trang, your favorite beach in Vietnam. I personally prefer Nha Trang Beach because I feel like it's bluer and clearer and I also have a video about Nha Trang Beach right here so you guys can check it out but if you come to Nha Trang, watch out for the quicksand though because it, it can be dangerous Okay, there are a lot of hard comparison questions here Hanoi or Saigon? This is a tough one because I was born and raised in Hanoi and there are a lot of precious memories here in this beautiful city, you know, but I personally prefer Saigon because for me, I feel like Hanoi is my comfort zone and everything is so laid back and 
very slow paced lifestyle here. I feel like I could step out of my comfort zone and immerse myself in the dynamic and energetic vibes of Saigon. The second reason why I chose Saigon is because of its weather. Saigon has two seasons like dry and rain season while Hanoi has four seasons. I love three seasons out of four seasons in Hanoi. The summer in Hanoi is horrible. I just wanted to escape from Hanoi in the summer. And the weather in Hanoi is just so unpredictable and it doesn't help with my allergy. I have the worst allergy in the world that whenever the weather changes, I sneeze like crazy and my head hurts and I just couldn't do anything. But when I moved to Saigon, those symptoms seem to disappear. So yeah, I prefer staying in Saigon because of its vibes and the weather there best places to stay for a month. Da Lat. I don't know if I'm being biased or what, but I just fell in love with that city, you know? It's so romantic, very peaceful. It has like a like the French touch in there. The food is actually like affordable and the people are super friendly there. And I feel like Dalat is so perfect for someone who wanted to get away from the hustle and bustle of the city. Uh, but if you're still working and you want to look for like opportunities, you want to explore more attractions and stuff like that, I would suggest you to stick with the two main cities, Hanoi and Saigon. All right, so I hope I answer all of your questions on how to travel in Vietnam. And if you still have questions, don't forget to comment down below in this video. And if you think this video is helpful, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you will be notified for the next video, especially the Vietnamese culture series. All right, so I'll see you guys next time. Bye.